Welcome back, everybody. Uh, today, before we begin, it's been a very heavy uh, weekend and heavy day today. Um, it's Monday. It's a national holiday here in France. It's Pentecost Day, I believe. I'm not. There's so many holidays; it's hard to keep track of them. Um, but <clears throat> anyway, it's a holiday here, and most people are off. But a lot of stuff's been going on. Um, a lot of sadness, um, anger, and so forth. And a couple people have mentioned in my Instagram comments and elsewhere that I should be addressing this um, and so forth. And I wanted to clarify a few things. Um, but mainly is that it's very difficult to have a conversation on social media. I just did an interview with a radio host and I had a really good talk with him and the engineer. And it was really nice to have um, an in-person conversation rather than people throwing darts um, I was thinking I should post something on Instagram today about what's going on, um, but I was also concerned that someone was going to say, well, you use this word, and what does that mean, and so forth. So every month I send out a newsletter, and today I was getting mine ready to go, and I decided to put uh, my thoughts in my newsletter because it's a dedicated audience, which is very nice. Thank you, those of you who subscribed to my newsletter. Um, yes, don't say, pay attention to those say you should. Anyways, um, I felt like I um, had something to say and I said it in my newsletter. So if you'd like to read it there, it's in my June newsletter, which I just put on my Facebook page. I put the link on Twitter. Or if you're a subscriber, you should get it in your mailbox. If you want to subscribe, you can go to my website too and subscribe in the sidebar. But I'm not here to get you to subscribe to my newsletter. I'm getting, if you want to read what I had to say. Um, but basically, um, no matter how well your intentions are, um, they can be misconstrued or whatever. Um, it's very difficult when people don't, you know, they want you to do something and it takes time sometimes to come up with your feelings. And as someone who's a writer, I often labor over words for a very long time. It drives my editor crazy. And if Julie's watching, hi Julie, um, I'll try to be on time next time with my next book. But anyhow, oh, I'm glad you like the newsletter. Anyhow, if you want to sort of read that, it's very interesting because, um, I have some different, not different views, but I have some views, um, you know, because my life has started, you know, I was in San Francisco and then I was here in Paris um, and there's been a number of incidents um, in life that I wanted to sort of bring about and now this is where we are. So go ahead and read that um, and today I'm going to continue with doing my cocktail because one of the reasons I, well, actually the reason I started doing this was because we were all in this collective thing together, the pandemic, the coronavirus. And it was helpful for me to have something to do every night to keep us together and to be warm and to be friendly and to provide, and I don't really want to use this word, but an, I was gonna say safe space, but a nice space, a place to come together over a drink, um, I could talk to you, you can leave comments for me, and I want everyone to feel um, happy, um, but sad as well. If you're feeling sad or angry, that's up to you. Those are your emotions, um, and I want people to feel that. And it's been very encouraging seeing people write things on Instagram. I just felt like what I had to say wasn't really something I wanted to put on Instagram in a sentence with a hashtag after it. So go read that there. Anyhow, I. I'll cut myself off because otherwise I'll keep talking like I did when we mentioned Charlie's Angels last week. And we had a lot of discussions afterwards with my friends about Charlie's Angels. So today's drink is very interesting. It's called the Jockey Club. I'm gonna use this a very interesting liqueur um, called uh, no liqueur de noyau or creme de noyau. Uh, of course the bottles are backwards, I'm sorry, because um, because I'm in selfie mode. Um, but noyau refers to the kernel of the apricot. And that's what this liquor gets its flavor from. This, it's said to be the oldest liquor in France that's not associated with a religious order. I think Chartreuse has that, um, that honor, I should say. Um, this is not available in the US because Chris Kimball told me that. I had an interview with him recently from Milk Street. And he goes, I tried to find that everywhere. Um, if you want to find it, a Tempest Fugit, uh, T-E-M-P-U-S, and then the next word is F-U-G-I-T. Um, they make a creme de noyau. Um, however, you can also use amaretto, which is very easy to get um, as well. Or even maraschino, but maraschino is a little more elusive and it's a little more expensive. So 
Um, I'd, I'd probably say that Amaretto is close to this. Um, today's drink is called the Jockey Club. And if you want the exact recipe, it's on my blog. I didn't put it up now. I put it there a few months ago. So just go to the um, search engine to search it. Actually, maybe I'll pin the name of it so that you have it. I always, I always don't like to stop and do this, but on the other hand, um, why not? Whoops, I can pin it, there we go. Um, so you can get this elsewhere, but it has a really strong smell. It's made from apricot kernels. Mm. It's, it, if you know um, almond extract, almond extract isn't really made from almond, sweet almonds, it's made from bitter almonds, and that's why it has that amazing aroma and that sharp flavor and, and smell. And you just add a drop to something and it's very prominent. Um, they do contain a, something that's toxic called prussic acid. Um, and I know that because every time I talk about Noyo, um, when I used to make ice cream, I still do out of the kernels. I make other things. Trader Joe's used to sell them edible ice, uh, apricot kernels. Um, I have a whole article on my blog that I wrote a long time ago about our apricot kernel safe to eat. And the short answer, hello, uh, Robert Simonson. <laughs> um, the short answer is you shouldn't eat them by the handful. Um, when they're distilled, they're safe to, to, to um, or infuse, you know, in moderate, very low quantities. Um, the difficult thing about researching information is I learned, because I have a recipe um, in my book, uh, Drinking French for Making no uh, Liqueur de Noyau. You can make it yourself. Um, my editor was like, well, let's, let's reference something, or I wanted to reference something uh, <clears throat> oh, hi, Brad. <laughs> yes, tweezers ready. I wanted to reference something that was solid, but there's so much bad information and health claims made about apricot kernels, I didn't want to link to them. But anyhow, I happened to have some apricots here at home, and I was cracking them this morning, and I wanted to show you the kernel, and I got like my little my maraschino, yes. <laughs> That's what a noyau is. It's the kernel inside. I might have to give this a whack with a hammer. Um, but these ones were coming out without even um, having to whack them. But I'm gonna whack this one open so you can see. And I should have had a hammer ready. I'm gonna use my Armagnac bottle. Uh, so a lot of people have asked me, because the recipe in my book calls for using several dozen of these kernels to make uh, this liqueur de mayo, which you can make at home, very easy. Um, and what I do is when I have a few, I put them in the freezer in a little um, freezer safe bag that I reuse over and over again after I'm done with it. Uh, gotta add that. Uh, I didn't crack this too hard, but I wanted to show you. So what comes out of this, I'm gonna use my, I love my tweezers. And for all of you who um, combat, Margo was here. She had her tweezers, that's why I got them. Margo is the bartender owner of Combat Bar. She's opening tomorrow, so. I'm hoping to go in and have a lesson in shaking cocktails. So this is what the kernel looks like. Oh, it looks, I feel like a doctor. Um, it looks like an almond. And if you taste it, it does taste like an almond. Um, yes, um, somebody mentioned, mm, very good, very bitter. Um, oh, I'm dying, I'm not dying. Um, so it's very aromatic and these make really good ice cream. Um, you can use cherry kernels, you can use peach kernels. Are you, so you can make your own, and once again, I have a recipe in my book, Drinking French, or you can buy this. What liquor do you use to make your own creme de noyau? You can use any kind of liquor that's not sort of neutral. Um, I believe this one has a little bit of cognac in it, but generally vodka is good. The higher the proof, the more extraction you'll get. Um, in France, they often say use eau de vie. Um, I felt a little diff uh, conflicted about telling people to use eau de vie because in France, you can buy very inexpensive eau de vie uh, at the supermarket for 12, uh, for the price of a bottle of vodka, 12 euros. Um, whereas in America, you'd have to spend a lot of money for a quart of eau de vie or whatever. Um, so I say to use vodka. And the higher the proof, the better, the better the extraction. So this liquor is made from these kernels and I've always wanted to go to the distillery, which isn't far from Paris, but I just haven't had time because I'm so busy um, doing nothing at home, but trying to find out where I can get tweezers. <laughs> also, um, yeah, uh, the other day I had a talk about bitters and I was showing people different aromatic bitters. It reminded me that you can buy bitters in these little boxes. This is from Scrappy's Bitters. 
and this is from The Bitter Truth. It's a little traveler's bitter set. And it has, this one has five little, or a four, I don't know where the other one went to. Um, it has four different, four or five different ones, but this has like a Creole bitters. So if you don't wanna go um, and buy a lot of bitters, you have a whole set of them. This is a uh, decanter bitters. I don't know what that means. Um, this is a celery bitters. Um, and bitters, as I was talking about the other day when I was talking about bitters, is a, think of them as seasoning a drink. Um, when you add like a spice to a cake batter, when you add like a little cinnamon, you're seasoning the batter. You're not overwhelming it, but you're adding to that flavor or more closely related maybe to vanilla. But this is like a grapefruit ex uh, bitter. So these are a very good way, very economical way to sort of have a bunch of bitters on hand and not have to spend a fortune. My idea of doing, your idea of doing nothing is my idea of doing a lot. I know I'm doing too much. It's almost time for a break, but we'll see. It's funny because um, tomorrow we go off lockdown and we've, we go, we've been off lockdown in Paris, but the cafes are going to start opening um, in Paris um, and in France and different places. Parks are opening or open already. Uh, but the big issue is summer vacation and um, it's a big thing in France and people were very worried they were, you know, summer vacation is sacred and people were very worried they weren't going to get their summer vacation. So we're going to see what's going to happen. I also put information in my newsletter about what is happening. A lot of people have written to me um, saying we're, we're, we were planning on coming. Uh, what's the situation? So I've got all that information in there. I love my newsletter. Um, okay, I'm going to raise this up so you can see what I'm doing. And hello in Vancouver. Oh, I'm glad you like the pink lady also. You have two giant bags of those kernels at home. Wow, lucky you. Um, as I mentioned a long time ago, Trader Joe's used to sell them. They were selling like apricot kernels to eat, to snack on. Um, so this cocktail does have lemon juice in it, so it's gonna be made in a shaker. Oh. And I'll take this out, because I'm gonna measure. Whoops. Okay, so I'm gonna start with two ounces of gin. Um, this interview I just gave before I think that I was talking to these people, it was for the Julia Child Foundation, and she was a big fan of French uh, vermouth, Noily Pratt vermouth. And um, she liked the reverse martini, which was mostly, it was like two thirds uh, vermouth and a third gin. And she was once asked what her favorite wine was, and she said gin, so she liked gin too. And I, I was gonna say, well, it's because she's from New England, but she was actually born in Pasadena. So two ounces of gin. And then three quarters of an ounce of liqueur de noyau or creme de noyau or amaretto will work fine. And amaretto is made from apricot kernels as well. If you look at the ingredients, it says ground apricot kernels. Someday, I was funny, I was watching some bartenders on Instagram last week, and they were doing that thing where they had these little tiny um, jiggers, and they were holding the bottle up like that and getting it right in there. So maybe if Margo, if you're watching, I want to learn to do that too, okay? <laughs> I have a lot of lessons. Poor Margo, <laughs> she's going to be like, with me. Um, somebody's asking if I could use kernels from dried apricots. I've never actually had dried apricots with kernels in them. So I don't know what that means, but if you can get them with kernels, that's very interesting. Um, in Chinese medicine stores, they often sell bags of apricot kernels. Um, they're sometimes labeled other things like bitter almonds or something to skirt around, whatever. But uh, they usually don't have a lot of fragrance, so I don't recommend them. Okay, so three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Freshly squeezed. What's interesting now, it's gotten quite warm in Paris and my street, oh, the streets in Paris are quite loud. There's always motorcycles or people on the phone and so I have to keep the windows closed when I use, when I do the videos and it gets hot. So tomorrow I'll be wearing a tank top. So excuse my, I'll, I'll try to do some epil epilation, uh, which is uh, hair removal. <laughs> sorry, sorry to bring that up. So. I've got two ounces of gin, three quarters of an ounce of noyau liqueur, 
uh, three quarters of an ounce also of lemon juice. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of sugar syrup, a quarter ounce of that. Sugar syrup is one part water to one part sugar. And you can even, if you don't wanna use sugar syrup, you can also uh, change the taste of your drinks. You can add maple syrup instead. You can use agave nectar. Um, sugar syrup's cleaner, so for this kind of cocktail, I'm sort of fine with that cleaner taste. And then two dashes of orange bitters and one dash of aromatic bitters. However, I decided I was gonna use not celery bitters, but grapefruit bitters rather than orange. These don't. The dash is a little different on these. And then, oh, there's chocolate bitters, which I don't think would go well with this drink. And there's lavender bitters too. Um, here we go. So I'm gonna add a dash of aromatic bitters. Oops. All right. Mm. And then my ice. And I hope you enjoyed Roman here on Saturday. That was a lot of fun. Um, he's a very nice person. Um, I always tell him how lucky he is to have me. Um, and I said, well, next time I'm going to try to find you because I screw up French a lot. And whenever he corrects my French, I said, I'm going to try to find you a French partner. <laughs> so he looks at me, he's kind of terrorized. Um, so I think it it's really cold. I promise I will learn to shake like Margot. And I'm gonna get my glass out of the freezer. So this is a drink from the 1930s. It, the first time I saw it was in the book, the Savoy Cocktail Book, which is sort of the handbook of cocktails. Oops. Vintage mm. shaker. Mm. Looks very refreshing, doesn't it? That white color. Um, on f Saturday, I made a, a brown drink called the Green Point, which is dark and it was delicious. It was very strong. I finished it when we were done and then I didn't have wine with dinner. So I'm just gonna garnish this with a lemon zest. Fortunately, all my peelers are behind my camera stand. Whoops. And if you wanna make it sort of a little fancier, you can cut it. So you can make a little strip like this. Um, you can cut it in half and make it even sexier and slender. I don't mind the little um, bits of lemon pulp in the glass. Some people double strain drinks. They wanna get all that out. I don't mind it, so. It's like some people like to strain all the seeds out of raspberries and strawberry stuff. And often I, I'll strain them, but I'll add some of it back in because you don't want a mouthful of strawberry seeds, but you want a, you want to have a few to let you know that it's real strawberries. And I had a friend whose father, I think he had, he had diverticulosis and he loved strawberries. So the family used to peel strawberries for him because he just missed them so much. And I, I still think about that story. And this was like 35 years ago. I was like, that is so charming. I, would, I don't know if I'd peel raspberry, uh, strawberries for anybody. So strawberries are the only fruit with the seeds on the outside. And raspberries are actually multi-fruits because each one of the little sacks has a seed in it. So it's a lot of fruits in one. Uh oh, the botanists are gonna come and get me a dub. Okay, anyhow, this is the Jockey Club. Mmm. It sort of has that refreshment of like a daiquiri because it's got the sour of a lot of lemon juice. And there's something about the bitter almond taste that's very tiki-like to me. Um, don't quote me on this, but I think a lot of tiki drinks have bitter, have that sort of bitter almond note because it go, notes um, because it goes so well with things like pineapple and mangoes and fruit um, and gin too. Mm. That's an outstanding cocktail, if I must say so myself. Mm. Very good. So that is the Jockey Club. 
And once again, the recipe is on my blog if you want to go there and find it to have it printed out. Um, and you have to just use the search engine. Do I feel Paris is louder than New York City? Um, it depends where you live in Paris. Uh, certain, like I don't live on a busy street, so I don't have cars honking, but there's people and people can be very loud, especially at night. There used to be a bar at the end of our street and people would, uh, one of the unintended effects of the smoking ban in Paris was that it made people go outside. So they would stand outside really late at night after the bars closed and it was very loud, people talking and so forth. So um, I think it is quite loud, but compared to New York City, there's like always something going on. Um, and there's a lot of din, like background noise all the time. Okay, I like these questions down here. No tongs today. Yes, I use them. Uh, yes, I used, uh, I didn't use tongs, I used tweezers. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the bitters assortments, there's two of them. This one, there's probably others too. These are the ones I happen to have. Uh, Scrappy's Bitters. And then there is one from The Bitter Truth. And these were sent to me by my friend Brad, Par uh, uh, Ed, Ed Anderson, who shot my books. He had shot Brad Parsons Bitters book and he sent me a gift. He sent me a, a box of these because he couldn't get these. I actually think these might be from, um, they might be made in Germany. Yes, they're made in Germany, The Bitter Truth. But you can get, you know, any liquor store should have a really decent selection of bitters. These are just good if you want to try them. Um, you want to, you know, you don't want to make an investment buying six different bottles because they're often 12 to $30 a bottle. Um, they will last forever. Where can you buy the bitters? Um, most liquor stores uh, have some sort of bitters. I don't know where to get these exact kits. I... Um, I know people don't really want to shop on Amazon, but I think I'm pretty sure they have them. But you can also go to their websites, Scrappy's Bitters and Bitter Truth, and they probably tell you where you can buy them as well. So, okay. I don't know if I want to drink this all by myself because Roman's not here right now. My newsletters, um, they were, they are archived, but I haven't, I've been a little slack lately because there's so much to do. But generally, um, on my frequently asked questions page, which is at the top of my menu, the menu at the top of my blog, if you scroll all the way down to the end of all those, I have them archived. Um, actually, I'm gonna do that tonight. I'm gonna put the last six ones on there or whatever. They're just, it's another thing to do. Hmm. How long does creme de noyau last? Forever. Um, this is 26 proof, 25% alcohol. So this lasts, it's very stable. Um, there's a white one that's 40%, which is even more stable. So it will last as long as gin or vodka. Um, this one might last a little less, but I think 25 proof is pretty strong. Um, so basically a very, very long time. Um, years and years and years. Do I have a favorite spirit? That's a tough question. Um, as people who have watched, I don't, I'm not here to advertise certain spirits, um, but I do love chartreuse. That to me is my absolute favorite liqueur. Uh, it's just, there's something about it when I drink it, it changes me. Um, it's like it takes over my everything. So that is my favorite. And sorry, I'm promoting one brand, but I like it a lot. And I am a customer too, I buy it. So, um, so it's great stuff. I'm very happy to, um, yes, you can use the Noyo in peach pits. Those are the same kernel as well. Some aren't as strong as others. You just have to kind of use whatever you've got. Um, eau de vie, eau de vie is a distillation from, it could be fruit, it could be ginger. I've seen garlic eau de vie, thyme eau de vie, gentian eau de vie, orange eau de vie. Um, basically what it is, is you take a bunch of fruit like pears to make pear William, pear, a lot of people know Poir William or pear eau de vie. You put them in a still and you cook them. You heat them up and the steam that collects, um, it becomes liquefied, it's condensation, and that gets put into a bottle or that gets extracted, comes out of this, 
this tube and it's actually quite strong. So usually it's um, diluted before it's bottled, but just to give you the idea. And that's eau de vie. And it takes something like 50 pounds of pears to make a bottle of pear eau de vie. Um, and I had a friend who owned St. George Distillery and outside of San Francisco, George Roof, and he started the company and he sold it to some people who are doing wonderful things with it as well. Um, and I went to him, like, I was a, uh, working in the Bay Area as a baker, a pastry chef, and he was like, he was German, and he was, that, David, what do I do with all these fruits? Because he, he had like buckets of like cooked raspberries and pears, and I was like, oh my God, um, what, you know, he hate to, but so that's what eau de vie is. It's, and it, it is the essence of the fruit. Uh, years ago, I wrote an article on my blog about kirsch because I use a lot of kirsch. I put a little bit in some berries. It tends to, as the French would say, exalt the flavor, but it brings up the flavor uh, just subtly. You don't add a lot, just a few drops, but it kind of, it's like when you add vanilla to like something, it, it's like, oh, it's, it, it, it heightens the flavor. Um, and a woman wrote to me, she goes, well, I was expecting a lot of cherry flavor and I didn't get that. And she wasn't mean about it. Um, but I thought, you know, I said, I recommended this thing that was whatever, $45 a bottle. So I felt that's like, okay, so I said, you know, well, it's not going to be a cherry full on, it's not cherry juice. Um, she was very nice and she sent me pictures of things she was doing with it. So that's the, that's what eau de vie is. And there's so many, I have a ginger eau de vie that's really good with like sliced peaches or I put a few shots in something. Yeah, kirsch with cheese fondue, sublime. Unless you have to, um, as somebody mentioned, um, in Switzerland, I was told this, um, I, they probably just did it to screw with my mind. But if you, your bread drops in, one of the great things to do with kirsch is when you're having a cheese fondue is you dip the little bread in the, a little bit of kirsch, not too much, and then you dip it in the cheese and you eat it. Um, so if you happen to drop the, um, the bread cube in the fondue, you either have to kiss everyone at the table or do a shot of kirsch. And I used to do culinary tours and we used to go to Switzerland. We had fondue night at this wonderful place in Lausanne. And, um, it was a, you know, a lot of strangers, not strangers, but we were, you know, we had 10 guests and nobody really wanted to kiss everybody. Um, so we had a lot of, one night I had to drink like four shots of Kirsch and I don't like to drink that much, especially when I have people around, but I didn't have a choice. Um, they were getting into, uh, I was being Kirsch or bread fondue shamed. Um, one thing about chartreuse goes really, really well with chocolate. Um, and there's a recipe on my blog for chartreuse souffle with chocolate sauce. Um, but chartreuse ice cream, chartreuse ice cream puffs with chocolate sauce is terrific. So those are my favorite. Do the, f the fudge swirls really good. Stracciatella. Strictly Swiss. Okay. I had a Swiss person write to me this weekend telling me, um, oops, I think I answered this. Yes, you can use peach pits. Saying me to stop using French words when I wrote because it was pretentious. So um, I usually put them in English afterwards, so I won't do that anymore. Just kidding, if you're watching, lady, you're blocked. No, <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, so that's the Jockey Club. Um, <sighs> block the Facebook. Someone is saying that, okay. I don't wanna block anything. I don't like blocking things. I like open communication. Um, Tu peux parler français. Um, it was actually kind of cute because um, in New York, they have these, a list of phone numbers. I was looking at something online and they had a list of numbers you can call in different languages um, if you needed information about the coronavirus. And for French, um, it said, <laughs> you know, it said English, this number, um, you know, they had the different countries and cultures. And it said, for French, it said Francois, and it had the phone number. <laughs> And Francois is the name of some, it's a person's name. It's not, Francais is the word. <laughs> so, I was like, well, if they can't get the word for French right, maybe, I don't know if I have a lot of confidence in the number. But on the other hand, it was very, very nice that uh, they were doing things in many languages because a lot of French people live in the United States and they might need help. So, oh, you like the green point as well. Um, and oh, happy to make you smile. Great. So that's the Jockey Club and hope to be back tomorrow. Um, I have to sort of get the week back on track because 
lots, a lot's happened the last weekend. Um, it was bouleversant. I, I know I'm not supposed to speak French, but that, that means to be uh, bowled over. It was very, uh, a lot of stuff's happening in the world. We've all gone through a lot together. It's still going on. Um, now we have this situation in the United States. So um, we all have to think about that and think about ourselves and other people. So I will leave it at that. If you want to go look at my newsletter, once again, it's on, I just put it on my Twitter feed and Facebook, I put links to it. You can subscribe as well. Um, oh, glad you ordered drinking French, um, Rusmed 55. Yes, Fatima H, um, it is overwhelming. It's okay to be overwhelmed. It's okay to say it um, because it's a lot of stuff going on. Um, and you know, as humans, there's a lot to take in, especially with social, I was talking to the people today at this radio program about social media. It's a lot to take in. So it's good to kind of take a, a breath about and not take it all, you know. Uh, actually, I won't keep, I'm digging myself in a hole, I think. Okay. Anyway, I will see you hopefully tomorrow and I'll have something new and exciting for you. Um, take care of yourselves. Take care of other people. Um, be kind to each other as well. Please, please, please. I beg you. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.